Well, hello and welcome to this webinar called Facing the Future. My name is Sharon Mark Teggart and along with Dr. Sally Cathcart, we are the co-founders and directors of The Curious Piano Teachers. Now, if you're on here live this morning or perhaps you're watching the replay, my guess is that you're one of the many piano teachers with questions about when and, and how to return to face-to-face -to -face teaching. So the aim of today's webinar is to highlight some of the ways piano teachers are thinking about the future and we hope that this conversation is going to give you the clarifying um, details that you need to sort out whatever your plan is going to be for next term. Now, we're going to be discussing three different possible models on today's live webinar call. The first one is uh, returning to face-to-face -to -face, um, and what that involves. Uh, second model is staying online. And then the third model is developing a new uh, hybrid version of, of piano lessons. Um, so by that we mean it's it's a mix, hybrid is a mix of online and face-to-face. -face. And I think what's going to be hopefully really, really valuable about this call is that we have a, a wonderful panel of piano teachers here today and they're going to be each answering um, these following five questions for us. So first question is, um, they're going to be answering what have you decided to do with your teaching studio when term resumes? So is that going to be A, remain online, B, go face to face, uh, C, have that hybrid model, or D, still undecided? Um, number two, they're then going to be telling us about um, their three main reasons behind this decision. Um, they're going to be thirdly sharing any concerns that they have about their decision. Um, number four, if you're thinking about returning face to face, what precautions are you putting in place to ensure a safe working environment? And finally, a question number five, um, we're asking, you know, have you had any feedback from your piano parents about your choice? So at this point, I want everyone who's live with us to answer a poll. And the question is this. What are your plans when term resumes? So you can see here on the poll the options. Um, you've got four options, just choose one. Face-to-face, uh, -face, stay online, hybrid model. So again, that's that mix of face-to-face -face and online lessons. And the fourth thing is maybe you're on this call and you're completely undecided as to what you're gonna do at the beginning of next term. So let's let's just pass over to Hannah, shall we, for a few minutes while people uh, put in their votes there. And Hannah, we haven't really introduced her properly, but she is our community manager and she's a fabulous community manager, although we say it ourselves, in that she looks after every, all the teachers in the community. So she's just going to give us a bit of an update on what the excitement is going on in the community at the moment. Over to you, Hannah. Thank you, Sally. So we've got a great curiosity box going on at the moment. Um, it's all about scales and arpeggios, and we've got some fabulous guest presenters and experts who've been contributing this this month. Um, we had an amazing webinar yesterday with a uh, concert pianist, founder of Inchada, Fred Karpoff, about professional level arpeggios. Um, we've had videos from Penelope Roskell, who's the author of The Complete Pianist, um, one of the most comprehensive books on technique. Um, we have uh, Slack channels de dedicated to our members. So we have a playing hub, we have a website hub to those members who over the summer are thinking of updating their own websites, um, working on their own playing, working on their own repertoire. So there's a safe place, a space for, for people to work on that and to get feedback from each other and work in community on those things, which is really, really exciting. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a very, it's been a very vibrant place actually, hasn't it? Well, it's always been a vibrant place, um, but there's been a lot of support coming up for people. Um, I think in this time where we've all been really, really struggling. I mean, all of us have struggled. I think one way or the other, and it's just been so lovely to go into the community, to the chat, and say, "Oh, I've just had this dreadful day when Zoom just didn't work. It just crashed, and everybody, there's." always somebody else who's going oh yes I had that yesterday yeah 
And right. I've already picked up a comment from somebody, you know, can't quite hear Sharon. Well, I'm afraid this is one of the problems, isn't it? That, that the internet is not 100% reliable. And we all suffer from broadband problems and that's certainly Sharon, uh, Sharon's problem. Uh, we, we have our fingers crossed there's going to be a solution fairly soon. Fibre soon. Um, <laughs> soon. But Sharon is at the end of the line um, in terms of where she is at the moment. And this is all problematic for us all. So it's uh, the community, as you might know, has we've, certain, we've got a, a free month. If you want to come and join us just for the month, just to grab some resources over the summer, then we'd love you to join us. Really would. Sharon, how's that poll doing then? Okay, I am going to end it now. Okay, great. So can everyone hear me okay? For me just to read these out? Yeah, okay yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. So uh, the question was, what are your plans when term resumes? Um, we had 13% of you say you're going to return to face to face, are you going back, you're going to face to face lessons. 15% uh, um, of you say that you're going to stay teaching online. 38% uh, have said, um, I'm going to go to a hybrid model, so a mix of face to face and online. And 35% um, of you say that you're still undecided. Mm. So I think that hybrid and um, the, the undecided, those are um, the, I'm actually just gonna yep. share all yep. these results there. Okay. I, I think it, there we go. That's, that's great to see. Thank you, Sharon. Now I think that really sums up how we're all feeling. <laughs> there, there, is, there isn't a clear, clear way forward. Um, and I think we have to live with that, really. However, let's just go on because um, we'd love to introduce you now to, to some of the teachers that we've, we've, we've tracked over from the community to say, come and tell us what you're doing um, and share. Because we do believe that if you can share, then you can learn from each other. And some of our piano teaching colleagues are here to join us. And um, we have got um, Katrina, Katrina Fox and Liz Giannopoulos and Joanna Garcia. Um, I'm, you're going to be watching a video from another teacher, Angie Say, and we have also got a, a fourth teacher, a fifth teacher even, Gwen, who's going to, Nathan, who's going to join us later. Joanna, do you want to just give us a quick bit of intro about yourself and your teaching? Okay, so I'm based in Burnley, Lancashire, and I have a studio of, I'm not quite sure, it's, it's quite a lot, and there have been a few extra during lockdown, <laughs> it's probably 50 plus per week, um, and uh, I'd just like to say um, that when we were sipping our Prosecco and our champagne on New Year's Eve, who could have imagined what this year had to bring, mm. and I just think it's marvellous that we have the versatility to even begin to think about this conversation now. And I think everybody's just been amazing. Yeah, I would absolutely second that, Joanna. Thank you for saying that, because I think the way that the piano teaching community has, has, has worked together to, to really make this possible. And I know that to all of you out there, you know, parents are on the whole, I think, very, very appreciative of, of everything that you have done, because you've all turned yourselves around from not knowing one end of Zoom to another, to being quite Zoom experts who can talk about lag and latency. Who would have thought it? So thank you, Joanna, for, for that. Um, Katrina. Hi, I'm Katrina. Um, I'm based in Bournemouth on the North Coast. And I've got a studio of about 35 private pupils. And I also teach about the same number in school as well. Um, so during lockdown, I've taken my whole private studio online. And while I couldn't take my school pupils online, I did work privately for another school. So I took on again around 35 transfer students online, which was quite an experience. Um, but it's been fun. Um, I think there's been a lot of advantages to learning online and I will certainly keep bits of it. Okay, thank you very much Katrina. And then over to Liz. Uh, hi, I'm Liz. I'm in South West London um, and I run a team of teachers. So I've got, I teach around 25 students myself at home and then we have another 80 students taught by six teachers through a combination of home visits 
and visits to schools. Um, and so moving on, I was quite a mammoth task. I had to take everybody, everybody with me and all the different things that that meant. Um, but we managed it and we were able to continue actually with our school teaching um, until they went back to school and suddenly mm. timetabling became a problem, um, which is something we'll have to look at. Um, but the t- my team have been absolutely amazing. I don't know if any of them are on this morning, but they all know that I think they're amazing for what they've done over the last few months. And we all sat together on Zoom with a bottle of champagne each last night and just went, oh, it's the end of town. So uh, that's what we're up to. Thank you so much, Liz. Okay, so each one of them has been asked to answer a series of questions. I think, Sharon, you've got um, some slides with those questions on, haven't you? So um, they, they've been asked uh, what they've decided to do with their teaching studio when the term resumes. We've already had a little bit of a hint at that, but, um, you know, whether they're going to remain online. Actually, it's the same, same questions we've just asked you. Um, remain online, go face to face, have a hybrid model. Here they come. Um, or uh, whether they're still undecided. And then we've asked them what their three main reasons are behind this decision, what concerns they have about that decision. Um, and then if they're thinking of returning to face to face, what precautions they're going to be putting in place to ensure a safe working environment. And then whether they've had any feedback from their piano parents about their choice. So those are the broad questions that we've thrown at them and asked them to uh, answer in a very concise way, (laughs) because otherwise there won't be any time for questions at the end. So we've asked them all to answer these questions sort of over the next, in in about a five minute, six minute space. So we're gonna start with a video now, which I'll just get ready um, and over to Sharon maybe for a, a, a bit of chat while I get this ready. We're going to be asking if you've got any questions to to uh, wait till we've heard all these presentations. Sharon. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Sally. Okay, so I've just, I've literally there been scanning through um, some of the, um, the decisions that you've been letting us know about, you know, what your, your plans are. Um, and also just picking up, I mean, someone, I didn't just pop down the name, but someone was, at, you know, considering you know the issues surrounding timetabling um, which obviously with the way some schools will be working that could be a problem um, so please do keep your um, keep your your questions your comments coming through the chat there because um, whilst everyone else is doing their little bit um, we will um, Hannah Sally and I will be going through questions and we're gonna just try and, and get back to as many of you as possible okay okay so it's over to angie now now i'm not sure whether the sound i think she recorded it and it's quite quiet my sound is up as loud as it could go so you might want to turn your sound up or even better get some headphones or earbuds and put those in because you can always hear sound much better so here is angie and i'll leave her to introduce herself hello everybody my name is Angie Say and I'm a private piano teacher based in Reading in Berkshire in England. Thank you very much Sally for inviting me to be part of this webinar to discuss um, what will happen when we return to teaching in a new term. Um, for me, I have made the decision to stay online with my pupils At the moment, my pupil profile, I teach uh, 30 children aged between 7 and 16 um, in three locations, in my home studio, in a primary school, as well as a secondary school. Now, these children are all um, fairly diverse in their location and year groups. And my last count indicated that under current COVID um, definitions, they would be in 24 different year group and school bubbles come September when they return to school. And um, for me, it was just too great a risk profile for me to manage. Um, And I won't be able to keep track of so many bubbles and so many schools. And should there be a case, um, I would not be able to 
um, find out quickly enough to mitigate risks um, or, or, or inform my other pupils in time. So for that reason, I'm staying online um, until Christmas at the minimum. Um, now, the other reason why I am not going, you know, why, why not pilot some um, pupils in a location? Um, I kind of hear you say that. Um, well, that pretty much is out of the question because of the teaching venue itself. Um, my, um, I would prefer not to invite um, um, too many bubbles into my own home where my private teaching studio is located. And in the schools that I teach, um, without uh, further um, expansion, um, or adjustments in teaching venue, um, the rooms just are not well ventilated enough to manage COVID risk. Um, and also um, they're too small. And uh, even if I bring a second instrument in, I won't be able to um, manage with the distancing rule. Now, um, what also helped me make this decision to stay online quite easy is partly due to the success over the summer term and um, despite the fatigue and the effort and the technology it has been a pretty successful term um, all the pupils who remain uh, who has come online um, and i have had a very successful uptake i i only have um uh, a few children who are not able um, to take online lesson and all those who have come online have progressed and learned so much and they have um, improved in their ability to practice at home so much so that the uptake for holiday lessons has been amazing um, uh, everybody wanted holiday lessons and and I'm in the, the position where I, I'm not wanting to teach as much um, because I'm trying to plan for September. So I know that there will not be any pushback from parents in terms of staying online. Um, now, it's quite also quite interesting to think about the risk and reward. Um, and I was thinking about, you know, if teaching in person is not so restrictive, um, for example, I, um, I can't sing in school, in, in, in the room. I can't sing in my, my local teaching studio because I, I can't quite ventilate it enough to um, make singing safe. So um, I can't use manipulatives, things that uh, we can share and play games together. Um, and I'm not quite sure about sharing my um, iPad and I'm not sure about sanitizing my iPads if I were to share it with um, pupils. So all in all, I felt that teaching in person with all this restriction would impact upon the quality uh, of the experience by the pupil um, itself. So I felt that, you know, the risk and the reward just didn't stack up for me to attempt or pilot any in-person teaching this soon. Um, now, are there any concerns? Yes, I do have several concerns. Um, I'm worried about my shortfall in my teaching hours as a result of having to pull my in-school teaching pupils into my after-school teaching timetable. That means that I will be teaching all five days a week. Um, I still have a shortfall. I still have a 20% teaching hour shortfall and I'm trying to resolve that by adopting a hybrid model where um, the ratio of the lessons that the children will be getting from me um, for the autumn term will be a ratio of three live lessons to one recorded lesson. So every after every three weeks there will be a week where they will be receiving um, piano lesson through a series of um, video clips instead and in doing so it frees up the time so that I get to touch all 30 of my pupils every week. Um, now I'm also worried about fatigue setting in so the children are all going back to school and having spent a very tiring day in school with COVID restriction I wonder 
how conducive it will be for them to come home and then have piano lesson online on Zoom with me. So I'm also worried about parents getting technologically fatigued, um, the amount of support that they've given over this entire term um, has been tremendous. Um, and finally, I am worried about my pupil premium. I teach um, several children that are funded by school um, because um, um, of their, their ability, their, their, that they would not be able to take piano lessons otherwise. Now, I have not been able to teach them online because they lack the infrastructure to get connected to me. Now, if I stay online until Christmas, um, I'm, I'm in discussion now to try and resolve and find a way for them to connect and perhaps have online lesson whilst they're in school and they're connected to the internet. Um, right, I'm just going to stop Angie there because I think she does raise some very interesting uh, points along the way and I particularly love this idea of it having she's really thought about the impact that um, of, of, of going back face to face and the restrictions, the impact on the quality of the experience. So let's move on to our next presenter, who is going to be Katrina. So over to Katrina now, if you'd like to unmute yourself. So um, I'm going back online in September, uh, not online, sorry, face to face in September. And um, the decision I've made largely because I think that's to do with parental demand. Most parents have indicated that they're feeling tired of online learning and they want some sense of normality back for the children. Um, it doesn't seem to have been driven from parents by um, a feeling that they haven't progressed well, because I think everybody feels that they've progressed well and it's been really enjoyable, but there seems to be, certainly down where I'm living, this desire to get back to normal. We haven't been hit particularly hard with COVID um, on the South Coast. Schools, most schools have gone back here, primary schools in all year groups. Um, so there is a feeling of normality returning. My concerns um, with this, similar to Angie, is the fact that I feel um, a virtual piano lesson is more effective in many ways than a socially distant piano lesson. Um, so rather than, rather than just staying, you know, making the option to stay online, I've thought about how I can incorporate the benefits of online learning into face-to-face -face lessons. So, um, I, you know, I've had to make a little bit of investment here. I've purchased, first of all, the digital piano, which the pupils will play on. So one of my major concerns was the shared instrument. And how do I effectively sanitize a piano where, you know, the sides of the keys are wood uh, with, you know, how do you keep it safe and how do you attempt it without destroying your instrument? So I felt that a digital piano for the pupils to play on was the easiest thing to do for me. I'll also be returning face to face in school. And um, so I've purchased a stage piano, which I can carry in there as a second instrument and do exactly the same when I go back face to face in school. So I can also place that right by the door, by a window and have an air purifier. Uh, I looked into screens, I was planning on having screens across the room. Um, instead, I've managed to move some furniture around and put three meters between myself and the child. So, um, you know, there's a nice bit of distance there. And when it comes to demonstrating, this was, you know, one of my key issues, really hard when you want to point at a note or, or help, you know, point to something on a page or stand over them and see what they're doing wrong or have them watch your hands. How do you do that? Um, again, I, I probably will buy a couple of screens just in case, um, in case I feel that that's going to be something that's useful to me. But currently my thoughts are that I will actually be Zooming within the room, within the lesson. So I have bought an iPad that will be permanently there and I will do exactly the same as, as I would do in an online lesson. Um, 
so I can demonstrate, obviously, the difficulty comes when trying to observe what the pupil is doing. Um, I can turn around and look at them if I need to get any closer. I'm still considering my use of masks and visors and that kind of thing. I've spoken to parents sort of tentatively about that. And the feedback I've got is they don't want masks, they don't want visors. It's not happening in schools. And from a parent's perspective, when they are sending their children back into school, where I know, I know we're told about bubbles, etc., but I think the experience on the ground has been that, that this isn't really happening in terms of the, there is no social distancing. The children are playing together as normal. They're in physical contact. And that is set to increase in September when they all go back at the same time within their classes. And I think that has what is what has tipped the balance for me is I have two children of my own that are in secondary school and they will be going back as normal. And there comes a point where the risk, as much as I am worried about it, I, I feel that we're losing control. Once my children go back to school and they're in, in close contact with 30 classmates who have siblings at different schools and, and other fam, you know, family members who you, know, you can't uh, know what other people's families do socially, the whole thing is sort of blown rather wide open. Um, it worries me. It does worry me when you read about aerosol transmission. If you have a child that's sitting there kind of silently exuding millions of viral particles during a half hour lesson, I don't think it matters what air, pur air purifier you've got, what mask you're wearing or what screens you've got. I think there's a massive risk there. Um, and it's just a, a risk that I have decided I feel I need to take at this stage while taking all of the precautions I can to minimize it. So that's me. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Katrina, for, for explaining it so, so honestly. And you've clearly made a huge investment, actually, in your, in your business to make that, uh, you know, to, to make it all happen for you. Um, I think it's really interesting, all the different things that are coming out about, you know, the venue, the restrictions, and these different models that we're all beginning to think about developing. And, you know, they, we'll come back to you, I'm sure there will be lots of questions for that. But thank you so much, that was so clear. And we're gonna move on now to Joanna. So Joanna, do you want to just unmute yourself and, uh, and take the floor for a moment. Okay, so um, I have made the decision um, to go kind of with a, a hybrid model. And I think to some degree, it will continue in that fashion. Now, when I say hybrid, I kind of mean principally online, but I have been, oh, it sounds dangerous to say it, dabbling with a little bit of face-to-face. -face. Goodness me, it feels like I'm such a naughty girl even saying it but always with a risk limitation um, in place. So I have 50 students around. Um, some of them, as I say, I've taken on during lockdown as online students. They live in Germany, they live in other places in the UK. So I will continue that. And I'm so grateful that actually this has been an opportunity for the business. So that is wonderful. Um, but in terms of my kind of regular face-to-face -face pupils, I've done this through consultation with parents. They understand that online is going to be the main way forward for the time being, but where possible, if they would like the opportunity of an occasional face-to-face -face lesson, and when it is possible through timetabling, then I will try to make that happen. I've explained the, the, the difficulties to parents regarding timetabling and, and the clean down that's necessary in between. Um, and that's why most seem happy to go forward with just the odd lesson, um, which is face to face. And my reasons for that are safety, safety has to be paramount at the moment. For me, in my circumstances, it's just not possible to put the safety procedures in place for every single one of my pupils to go back face to face. As we go back to um, the, the normal school timetable in September, there is just no way, unless I worked until nine, 10 o'clock at night, that I could space out my pupils enough. Um, so for me, staying mainly online with a little bit of face to face is risk imitation. Um, 
and as I say, because this is going to continue as a model, and I think, just as Katrina said before, there are real benefits to both. Um, that so many benefits we've learned from online teaching, but equally, I miss hearing the sound in person. I miss seeing clearly what they're doing in terms of technique. So for me, a little bit of a balance of the odd face-to-face -face and some online works for me. My concerns, fairness. It's, I have consulted with parents, but there are some pupils, particularly in the middle of a, let's say an evening slot, where I simply just can't timetable it so that there is the, the minutes in between. And I'm concerned that as we go forward, whilst people are very generous at the moment and saying, yes, I understand that other people need to have a, a chance at that. It's to do with fairness um, and will people be happy going forward, just having the odd lesson. Um, another concern is to do with the difficulty. Having, having experience switching from face to face to online, it's very difficult. Online has almost become a safe space. We know where we are. We know what's going on with Zoom, well, mostly. And, and I've found in the little experience I've had, it's tiring to switch from face to face, cleaning, that pressure of time, it's tiring. For me at the moment, it's worth it, but we have to think long term of the fatigue as well. Um, in terms of how I do keep um, everything safe, because risk limitation has to be a factor. Um, I've done a risk assessment. I've shared that with all my parents, all of my pupils. Um, I've asked them to talk through it with children where they are younger, younger pupils. I talk through my expectations when they walk through the door. I have, I'm very fortunate. I have two pianos. I have a digital piano and my piano. I make sure it's well ventilated. We use hand sanitizers. We don't share resources. That's a limitation. But I'm so grateful that the feedback so far has been that, that parents seem to show a real generosity in allowing their people, their, their children to have that opportunity uh, for face-to-face -face where possible, but are grateful for the fantastic progress that in general they really have been making. And um, I'm 100% I'm grateful to all of my pupils for their versatility um, in adapting to what's been a really difficult situation, but one that we've learned a great deal from. Thank you, Joanna. And, you know, obviously your, your pupils are benefiting from your lovely, enthusiastic and positive approach that you have. I think that that point, two points you made, I thought that really struck me about fairness, being concerned that every child has that opportunity to have a face to face lesson. Um, and the fact that, yes, online is now this safe space, isn't it? We understand that. We know how to deal with that. And I know just from going out this week and I went and had my hair cut, you know, when you go out into the big wide world again, it's quite, it's quite scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we were saying before, switch. Sally, I'm sorry, we were saying before, Sorry. Sally, weren't we, that actually um, it, 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 there isn't kind of an extreme necessarily that we are either face to face no. or online because it is a continuum. Um, you know, there is always going to be, I think, forever, that, that whole range of experience and, and a range of, let's say, as possibilities and opportunities rather than restrictions. I, I, I think that's true. Possibilities and opportunities. I'm just going to note that down. Thank you so much, Joanna. And let's hand over to Liz. Liz, the floor is yours. Thanks, Sally. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting challenge for me. Um, I think much of what Katrina and Joanna have said resonates great deal with me. I'm probably going to go, I say probably, because I'm very aware that we have no idea what the world's going to look like in, in six weeks' time. But I will probably be doing my own version of hybrid, which is I plan, I currently teach four days a week at home, and I plan to do Mondays and Wednesdays, one week online, with Tuesdays and Thursdays face-to-face, -face, and then switch it. So children will get a lesson face-to-face -face once a fortnight and online once a fortnight. Many reasons for this. One of them is, of course, that actually the, the cleaning time required in between is going to extend my day. And I still have young children. I have one young child. The other one's a stroppy teenager. But I have one young child who needs me around in the evening. I don't want to be teaching until 7, 8 o'clock at night. Um, and the other reason is I wanted just to reduce the amount of traffic coming through my home. I have a studio at the end of my garden. I'm sitting in it now. Um, I have um, my acoustic there. I'm, I'm going to 
um, have a digital over here and I'm hoping to put a perfect screen in between. Um, I hope that I do not, not have to wear a face mask because one of the things I think about is actually in Zoom, on Zoom they can at least see my face and you can see and I know, you know we're always so terribly positive but you know I have a, one, I spoke to one of my teenagers earlier in the week and she went that was rubbish wasn't it and I went yeah it was a bit and you know in a very nice friendly way and you imagine if you do that with a mask on and they cannot see your intention that really worries me but obviously I'll wear a mask if I have to um so that's my thinking um my complexity is of course the rest of my team um, and actually, I just saw Estelle just asked about on the chat about home visits. So um, all of my team give home visits. So this means that's 80 children, 80 families, and of course, six teachers. How are we possibly going to manage that? One of the key things is we're in London. Four of my teachers have to go on a tube to get here. So that, that possibly is a no starter from the beginning. And that's actually got to be their choice as well. I can't impose that. But assuming that we can get it up and running, we're then expecting parents, I will be writing protocols, I've done the active risk assessment, I'll be writing a you know, procedural document for how I want parents to you know, create, create a safe space for my team. But then we rely upon the parents to do it, and do they, or you as teachers, actually feel confident in saying, sorry, I'm not coming in. Um, I want to issue all my team with these. Temperature checkers, so they're going to, oh, all my students can be checked before they walk through my door um, and they can be checking um, their, their students. So then I thought, how are they going to go to the loo? You know, if you do six back-to-back -back piano lessons on the road, I'm, I mean, I'm at home, I'm all right, but I'm assuming that you're going to need the loo at some point. So we've got all this stuff to think about um, and that that isn't clear. I'm, as, I'm probably as, as, as befuddled as everybody else. I just know that I actually have to consult with teachers and teachers, uh, teachers and parents, sorry. The other issue, of course, is that if you want to do a mixture, if you're on the road, your four o'clock lessons are face to face, but your 4.45 lesson has decided they want to be online, well, you're not in a place to do an online lesson. So the um, timetable is going to become an absolute Rubik's Cube. So I haven't quite figured all of that out. One thing I have done is thought about how we're going to handle schools. Um, one of the schools that we work in, um, I think the music room used to be a cupboard. And um, it has a very low ceiling. It has no ventilation. There is, it is, probably isn't two metres square. We will not be teaching in that room. I've reached out to the schools um, and neither have replied to me yet. So I shall be pressing that issue now turn over. Um, but what, what I have done is where we have had some natural attrition at the end of this academic year, people moving on, what I've done is I've kept space in the timetable, haven't filled, made new offers so that we can potentially move our students that are in school into the after school timetable. It will mean they're changing teachers and it may, may mean that we're only doing that for a term and things could go back in 2021, who knows? Um, but what I think the key for me for September is flexibility. Um, it's just making sure that we're absolutely flexible in how we can respond to teachers, parents, children, families, my family, every, you know, there's, there's a lot to think about. Um, so probably a mixture, but still not decided officially. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. It's, it's such a hard decision but to make, isn't it? And I think we're still, you know, we're just celebrating the end of term. And we, as, you, <laughs> as we were, were saying last night, but we've got another six weeks yet before we start term again. And a lot can happen in those six weeks. And we still don't know yet the effect of the the lock-up, the unlock, or whatever, that we're, we're experiencing here in England, slightly different in Wales and Scotland, but we're too, it's too soon yet to see what is happening from that. So all decisions, I think, for everybody have got to be tentative ones at the moment. You know, it, it's got to be best scenario on an upwards, you know, it, it is not... Um, uh, not not the situation deteriorating. Um, I, I, I thought when you were talking about this face-to-face -face and possibly having to wear a mask, actually it won't be face-to-face, -face, will it? 
Do you know what I mean? It won't be face to face. It'll be mask to mask. Yeah. Return to mask to mask teaching. Um, and you're so right about that face and, and needing to use our face. And we can say things with our faces. And I find myself going around shops and things with a mask on, grinning broadly, hoping that they'll see my eyes are smiling. <laughs> But it feels very, very strange, I have to say, wearing masks and things, but obviously uh, very uh, important. But I love this idea of, you know, when you're visiting a house, what do you do about going to the loo? Uh, absolutely. What do you do? I don't know. I don't know. So, it's um, yeah, I just wanted to add, I meant to say about parents, this, you know, you're asking about how we have a consult with parents. There is a huge expectation where I am that we will return to face-to-face -face teaching. That is, people are sending emails going, oh, I assume we're back to normal in September. Do you really assume that? Because that's a really yeah. assumption. But actually there is this, um, oh God, I forgot what I was going to say. Parents, where was I? Oh, it's gone. Um, yeah, are they looking to us? They're looking to us for leadership. They're looking yes, I think to, that, us yeah, to have that's... the answers. Like, yeah. because they just, because where, wherever the authority lies, they're not getting clear guidance. And we're just another group of people who are in charge of something that yes. they're expecting us to have the answers. And we have to just go, we're doing our best, but we're just normal people like you. We're not trained in this. I... I think that's a really interesting point, um, don't you, Sharon? Because I can see you've you've come yeah. off now. Yeah, I, I do think so. I mean, <clears throat> um, I know that I do collaborate a lot with parents um, and you know adult students and things. Um, they have you know many opportunities to give feedback, but um, I know my decision about this. I have made it because. I feel it is it is my business, and um, there. I mean the the lack of longitudinal research that you know doesn't exist. Um, I, the fact that you know you know to mask or not to mask. You know we just don't know enough um, about this. So, I mean my personal decision has been to stay online. Um, but that's because I can and because of my work situation that, you know, I have a small studio. But um, I do think that certainly for me, I didn't actually go out to parents and say, what do you want to do? Because I knew that that was kind of, you know, the floodgates open and you get all sorts of, um, of things. So I'm wondering, shall we actually bring Gwen on at this point? Yes, have you found Gwen? I'm I just have about indeed, to yes. look for her. Gwen, I'm oh, going okay, to fantastic. You Let's to bring panelists. Yes. Um, because yes, Gwen be has done a survey. Um, and again it's it's quite interesting um, her her findings. Gwen, good morning. Hello, hello, good morning everyone. Hello. Welcome, Gwen. So yeah, just following up from what you were saying, I two weeks ago sent out a survey to all of my pupils. I'm just gonna load it up for you now. One moment. Uh, yeah, I'll share. Uh, this is about a dozen, um, I think it's 14 replies, so that represents most of my, um, most of my uh, private pupils. Hang on, let me just grab that. So this is the copy of the, um, the survey I took out, sent out. Um, so this is only my, my private pupils, not the pupils I teach in schools. But I wanted to get a feeling of where they were. And as Sharon was just saying, I think their expectations and um, are quite a lot higher than we're able to deliver. So have a look at this. So my first question was, when do you, do you want to return? So I put in July, August, September, Q4, which is up to Christmas, or Q1 next year, which will be January. And where are we? Here are the results. Pretty bar charts. So if you have a look here, July is blue, so over 20%, a fifth were expecting to start in July. Uh, nobody said August, lots of people said September, a few, uh, quite a few people said Q4, nobody said Q1 next year, a few are, are not currently mm -hmm. having face-to-face -face lessons. Um, and this lovely person, this is just one person, <laughs> and whenever you feel comfortable doing it, Tellingly, she is also a singing teacher, so she knows all the problems that we're facing at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the next question I asked was, 
where, how would you like to transition to face-to-face -face lessons? So I gave them the option of immediately transfer 100%, one week on, one week off, once a month or once every half term. And you can see there a whopping 50%, which if you take out the people who don't want face-to-face -face lessons anyway, means more than half of my pupils think it's absolutely fine to go straight back to 100% face-to-face lessons. A few said start with alternating weeks. A larger few said start with a face-to-face -face lesson every four weeks. Uh, so there you are. Everybody's thinking, yeah, we'll just go, not everybody, but a, a majority are thinking just to go back to all lessons. Now, this one's a bit hard to read. Let me actually show you the question. I listed a load of different um, uh, countermeasures and distancing and other things, all things that have cropped up in the EPTA uh, risk, risk assessment basically. So how far do you think they should be, I should be from your child, three, two or one metre, using separate instruments, uh, not touching resources like music, keep clean um, uh, prior to every lesson, uh, ventilation, perspex screen, no singing, washing hands, uh, face masks, disposal of These were all I think at least. And here's the results, and this is quite dispiriting. 78% thought washing hands was a good idea. So that means that 20 odd percent thought you didn't really need to wash your hands. Um, a handful of people thought that the, sort of about half thought that the, the toilets needed cleaning and the piano needed cleaning and various other things, touch points. Um, a few people thought you might want to use a separate instrument, 21%. A few people thought, um, what's that? One metre apart. Um, not, many, not much uptake for two metres apart and no uptake for three metres apart. Um, verifying that they were infectious price the lesson, uh, 14%. And a few people thought um, about, oh, these are NA people. And then again, my singing teacher, friend and somebody else thought that I should probably wash my hands as well which I'd forgotten to put on the list. <clears throat> then I just thought about risk assessments. Everybody was like was thinking, happy to accept a standard risk assessment from me. Nobody wanted any input in that risk assessment and the orange people are don't, they don't have face-to-face -face lessons. These people are picked up through lockdown um, who are in London and the Midlands somewhere so yeah. And then <laughs> if insurance person I'd say these have thorough cleaning of the piano. Um no, no less than <laughs> a half wouldn't be prepared to pay for that. Uh a few more would be prepared to pay for the materials, but definitely not for my time. I can kind of see that because charging my piano teaching rate for doing cleaning is is a bit um it's a bit um, contentious. A few more would be, oh sorry, nobody would be prepared to pay for my time, but not the materials. And a, 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 a heartening 21% thought that it, they'd be prepared to pay me to, to uh, clean my house every, every half an hour. Uh, there we go. And then this was the real kicker. I said, for insurance purposes, um, parents' guardians would not be able to sit in on the lessons um, and I wouldn't be able to have any physical contact with the pupil. This is bearing in mind that I've got probably four or five little wiggly boys, aged about five, five or six, who are going to struggle big time mm. with no parental supervision. Their parents, however, think that they're absolutely confident that my child will remain focused without parental supervision. One had the self-awareness to be unsure that, that whether their child would remain focused. She is the parent of the wiggliest boy of them, of them all. Um, and nobody was prepared to say that they'd be unable, that their child would be unable to remain focused. I know for a fact that there are four, four out of those uh, pupils who their child would just not be able, even in a 20 minute lesson, wouldn't be able to sit still and remain focused or, you know, engage in an activity away from the piano without somebody bodily helping them to focus. Uh, and then the rest of NA's, uh, 14, 14. Uh, this is a bit irrelevant to you guys, that's the lessons they wanted. I um, got some feedback from, pretty positive feedback, uh, on their online lesson experience, which is nice. Um, and they, I asked them to rank me just to boost my ego. 
two, two people said that I was only worth four out of five, so obviously I'll never speak to them again. Um, and then I, I've got some, yeah, a bit of confidence boosting at the as well. So, yeah, I mean, the real takeaways for me are parents think, as um, somebody else was saying, that we're just going back to completely back to normal in September. This is their expectation. Um, they are basically not prepared to pay for me to clean the studio in between. And the level of measures that they feel are necessary are far lower than what I think certainly most of us feel are going to be necessary. Um, so, yeah, interesting. I'm glad I took, I took the time to get this feedback because I now have a better understanding of how these pupils feel. But how their parents feel more support. But yeah, it's just disheartening to me that they just don't seem to have much awareness of the risks involved of all these different families trooping through my home to you know spread this spread you know potentially spread this disease all over the place. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. That's no that's absolutely fascinating to see to see that you've done that. And although it's quite a small number, you know, nevertheless it's um it, it's very thought-provoking, I think. Um, and of course, we're thinking about this in a very different way to parents, aren't we? You know, the parents have had these children now since March at home, climbing the walls. They've been trying to, and I know many of you out there are parents yourselves, and you've been doing this, This um, uh, you've been teaching, you've been holding down your job um, and all the stresses that we know goes with that. You've been home educating your children. You've been uh, doing the cooking, the cleaning, looking after the house in the normal kind of way that we do on an everyday basis. And we've all had the level of anxiety about the whole situation going on as well. So I think um, you can understand parents going oh I just want to give them all back and not thinking it through in the way that we are all going into here we're all concerned about ourselves the parents are concerned about themselves <laughs> and I, I I think it was something that probably Liz said you know parents where did you put it Liz sorry parents want are looking to us for answers and um, I, I think that's absolutely the case so thank you Gwen Maybe um, if all our panellists would like to unmute themselves and maybe we could just have some question and answers um, coming out. I don't know whether Hannah or Sharon have picked up any questions that have come out for people in specific ways. Yes, yes. Um, Joe's asking about singing in lessons. Um, this is one of her questions. Will you be singing in lessons? And she's particularly directing this one to Katrina and Joanna. She's saying she can't imagine not singing in lessons. And it's one of the reasons that she's worried about face to face. Um, she has a lot of beginners, but I mean, we, we all sing all of the time, don't we? It's something that yeah. you know, sometimes she, uh, my worry is that I'll start and I won't realise I'm doing it because it's such a natural thing. So what do you think about that, Katrina? Uh, I think I'll, I'll be making a conscious effort to sing less in lessons um, or to make sure that it's planned when I do so. I think, as I said, I'm still undecided about my use of masks and visors. Um, I think I've been looking at the research in terms of how it's spread and the difference between sort of droplet and aerosol and so on. And if you sing certainly at a, a lower level, and it's not projected in the direction of the person you're singing at. I think to a degree, the risks are not as, as big as we might think. Um, and I think there's, you know, the possibility of buying a screen as well um, so that I can do that kind of thing. I mean, I also teach woodwind. So this is something that I'm, I'm kind of considering it alongside the woodwind teaching. Yeah. Um, and I know the, evidence is not clear on, on teaching woodwind. Um, my school have done all their risk assessments. I teach woodwind in school and we're going straight back in with group woodwind lessons, group woodwind lessons, which is something I think, I mean, I'm gonna buy one of the screens and I did post the link to it in the, in the chat um, that's quite portable because I, you know, I'm happy I will go in and I will teach the group woodwind lessons but I'll be putting a screen up between myself and the children. Cause when you've got new starters for flute, um, you know, it's bit happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and I think, yeah, I, I think it's all of these li little details uh, similar to, you know, transitioning to online that we'll figure out along the way. And I think it's just keeping it up here and keeping alert to it and thinking about, well, if I need to sing here, maybe I hum instead, you know, that's surely humming's got to be a little bit different if you really want to, to do something like that. Um, I think I will probably be asking all children to have a mask with them just for the simple reason that, you know, if you get a little something caught in your throat and, and you do need to keep coughing, I don't want to have to sort of push them out the door or anything like that. I think, you know, let's everybody have a mask just in case something happens and maybe that would be suitable if you're humming or just low level singing. Yeah. Something I need yeah. to do more research on. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Joanna, have you any thoughts about that too? Yeah, I mean, um, again, it's about risk limitation, isn't it? And since the majority of my lessons for the time being will remain online, then I can plan in plan in any singing activities on the, in the online lessons. Now, the difficulty, of course, is during face-to-face -face, because it's very easy to be caught up in the, more, in, in the moment. And whilst I'm not expecting to launch into Act One of La Traviata anytime soon, um, sometimes you do want to kind of just sing naturally as a, as a response. So I think the answer is planning it into online lessons and uh, just trying to keep myself facing in a different direction and trying to keep a lid on myself. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. And I'm just going to pick up on a few other things that have been coming through in the chat. Um, I know that Anastasia has said, um, you know, this need to be, um, you know, what happens if, you know, in a couple of months time, this all comes back, we all can go back into lockdown again. Um, and she's obviously going to be preparing her piano parents to say that, you know, if the need arises, we'll be going back to online. Um, she's obviously going to face-to-face -face lessons, but, um, you know, in, in the case that we need to move back. Uh, I know regarding the, uh, the face masks, Philippa has said about, you know, the visors. Um, Lindsay has, and I think she's possibly tried this, the, the wearing um, of disposable gloves when demonstrating, you know, the kind of the really tight ones. So obviously, um, I know that the sort that you mean, you know, literally they, they hug your fingers. I haven't tried it, Lindsay, but you've obviously, yeah. you've tried this and um, it's, it's a possible solution. Uh, we had a question to, from Magdalise and she says, how, how would you make an online reward system? Uh, my reward system face to face has come to a grinding halt and I would still want to motivate the students for getting rewards for their efforts. Um, I mean, I'll answer it and then I don't know if anyone else has any ideas. Um, something I have been um, using, as I know others um, on here have, is something called Cadenza, which is an online notebook and it enables students to, um, to send videos between lessons. Now, this has been, I think, probably one of the most transformational things. Um, it hasn't worked for every student, but for students, it, it has worked for, it's been amazing, you know. So we have the, the online lesson. They will learn during the week, they will send me videos. And what's great is you get to see with clarity and hear with clarity what they're doing and the fact that they will actually practice to, um, to, to get that done. And then I give them feedback. So it's actually, rather than, I'm not so sure if it's kind of stickers you're actually referring to or something which is maybe a more extrinsic way, but I find this is a great way to intrinsically motivate students. Okay, the fact that they're actually progressing in something. Um, any other thoughts or any other points that we want to, um, to pick up on? Um, I am just just like to say something actually that just that um, a lot of these discussions will be continuing in much more detail inside our community. I can see that this webinar has raised a lot of interesting questions and we are going to be discussing this and chatting about all of these things over in our member exclusive Facebook group. So if you're um, feeling like you'd like to explore some of the questions in more detail or you'd like to ask some, somebody what useful link they've shared, what's, what, what equipment, what PPE they're thinking of, anything like that, 
we have a member exclusive Facebook group and all of these conversations happen all of the time. So I've just popped the join link into the chat. If you join at the moment, you get um, a month's free support from us. Um, so you can access everything in our community. You've got access to the Zoom community chats as well. Which are gonna happen at 11 o'clock today. And I, I know what, I, know, I guess I think, I know what the topic of conversation is gonna be in the community chats today. We're just gonna go over and continue this really, aren't we? I, I just wanted to pull out something that Genevieve um, has written. Thank you, Genevieve, for this. Um, thoughtful as ever. Um, and she's saying she does, she, I don't think, she says, people want or feel comfortable about making decisions themselves. Um, it's incredibly draining, I think this is such a good point, incredibly draining to have to constantly think about the risks. You're so right, you know, um, in everything we do on a daily basis. Um, and then she points out that this puts a huge responsibility onto us as teachers because people are assuming that if you are um, returning to a uh, face-to-face -face lesson, for example, it's because it's allowed. Um, so they are looking at us as being the ones who have made the decisions based on the government guidance. And we all know, of course, we are doing our best to offer stuff based on government guidance but that's also incredibly draining and exhausting for us because we're having to put all this work into finding out what is the best thing um thank you genevieve for that you know uh, i think I really think, useful i think sort of going on from that i think as well we will be thinking about these questions a lot more than our parents were yeah, well, yeah. what occurs to me just listening is that um you know, I wonder if we spent some time talking our parents through the risks and the options, and then you took the survey again, whether the results would change. I just, mm -hmm. I just wonder. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Liz. Good point, Anna. Share a thought, a little anecdote on that. Um, my son's primary school has a new head that started in February, so she's had oh, a gosh. The previous head had been there for twenty-five years. So she's oh had a difficult God. start. And when they went back to the alternate weeks, which is what they've been doing for the last four weeks for all year groups, the parents were up in arms about it. There was, you know, in all the WhatsApp mums groups and dads groups and all this stuff. And they were saying, you know, why aren't we going back full? Some people, why aren't we going back full time? Some people, why is it years one, two and six? Because my son's in year five. It was an absolute who part. And the key to all of that is that she didn't engage with her community. Mm -hmm. and she communicate it properly it was absolutely right and just i think that she made the decisions in, yeah. in working with her team her team and the governors it wasn't up to the parents to make the decisions it was the way she communicated it to us as parents is what got people's backs up and i think that's possibly a key that we have to remember that we have to take the parents on the journey they are looking to us yeah. Yeah. But we have to make yeah. it right for ourselves and our own families, perhaps first. It, it, it is our home for most of us, I think. So um, yeah. Yeah, it's how we communicate with us. Uh, thank you, Liz, for that. I think that's that's a really wonderful taking parents on the journey. Um, I mean, for those of you that might or might not have read, I, I wrote a, a thank you letter to my piano parents. I'm staying online because I live in a house that has, well, it doesn't really have any proper ventilation except a French door, which there we go. Um, it's just not, it's just not feasible from, from a venue perspective. And, um, you know, each, each week in lessons, I'm talking with the parents, I'm discussing how things are going. We have, we always spend about five minutes if possible talking at the end about everything really, how it's going. And I just wanted to say thank you to them. And I shared it in the blog. I know in the, um, over on the curious piano teachers on our website so you can go over there and read that and i shared it just just in the hope that it might be useful uh i'm not suggesting you copy it but there might just be a word or a sentence in there that you think oh yes okay that makes me think something different that i can then share with my parents because you do need to engage with your parents rather than just um be the authority i mean i'd written down here you know just to try and sum up some of these ideas that the parents want leadership and i think they do um and yes you use your authority but you have to use your authority in in a very um uh, welcoming kind of way as Liz said you need to take them with you on this journey rather than imposing it from the top you need to uh, spread the agreement 
between us and explain why and this is what I do in this letter, I explain why I'm not returning to face-to-face -to -face at this moment in time. And I have said, you know, we, we will continue to look. I will continue to explore, and I've said I'll be continue to be cur curious about when I might be returning to face-to-face -to -face or hybrid models. So they know I'm not just shutting a door, they know I'm looking and I'm thinking about this. And then the parents respect the decisions that you've taken. And they might want it different, although most of them have said to me, actually, when I've asked, you know, yep, yeah, we're absolutely fine with this, Sally. You've made the right decision because they are very cautious, I think, uh, when you explain to them the risks that are there. So, absolutely. The, the link any, to any... that blog is just, um, I have just popped it into the chat. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Anyone who's never Perfect. missed it, I'm just going to pop it back in there again. Yeah, yeah. So... I think we are coming to a, a, a natural kind of conclusion here for this webinar. And uh, it has been as fascinating and um, interesting as I thought possibly might be. And it's fantastic that we've had so many attendees here. And I think it shows the, the level of concern that we have as a profession. And I think as working together we can be really professional about this and we can really guide our parents you don't have to do it by yourself though we can all help together and it just makes such a difference i think some of the points that i i've kind of pulled out um that really uh, resonated for me was this idea of venue you know think about the venue or venues that you are teaching in and make a decision based on things like the ventilation, things like the size. Um, think about whether you could get a second keyboard in there. Can you afford a second keyboard? If you can't, then um, what else you could do? And um, can, you, can you get some screens in there? Even some banners maybe could, could work as a cheaper alternative. I was having my hair cut, as I said, and they were telling me about screens that they'd had put up there and these screens they were having were costing 500 pounds each. That, that's, that's quite an investment, isn't it? Um, but they were also saying we're using banners between all the, the, the washing areas. They had banners there. And so maybe banners is another alternative that you could have a banner for your business and have it, have it um, separating things. You can just pull the banner across when you want to do some singing. Um, I think you've got to think carefully about your singing and um, how much you're singing and how much you're likely to sing. I mean, I know I sing all the time, obviously. Um, and also, I would find it hard to sing quietly. I, I tend to be an enthusiastic person and I project automatically when I'm teaching. You know, I go into my, oh, Sally is the teacher mode and I start bouncing around. Um, and that's another reason for me deciding to stay online because I know I just couldn't control myself, basically. I think that's what it is. Um, but if you're going to do that, then you, you need to... I love that idea that Joanna had, and I think um, Katrina was talking about it as well, that you plan the singing into the activity and you make the necessary adjustments that are needed within your teaching studio. Um, I think that's really, really important. Um, I think the other thing that I wanted to pull out was, yes, this use of things like cadenza and people have also been talking about we transfer. So if you're staying online, the quality of sound isn't always the best. We know that um, as much for maybe you've got your sound sorted out, but the pet, but the child is sometimes still on just the iPad sound, um, which isn't always bad, but you know, pianos are very particular things and um, maybe get the child to record um, or the, the student to record I've been, and, and then send it to you. I've been doing this with one adult in particular and actually we've used Cadenza and he's recorded. And all I've done is put recording one, recording two, recording three, recording four each week. And he's uploaded his recordings and then told me what it is. And I just go in and listen to it shortly before the lesson. And then we're able to have a lesson based on those ideas. So cadenza recordings, we transfer really uh, can make a big difference, I think, like that. Um, I think the other thing I just wanted to finish with really is coming back to this idea of leadership. Um, think about it, but then be decisive in your choice. 
and come up with the reasons. Make sure you've got the reasons and you explain the reasons fully to your parents or as fully as you can for the decision that you have made. And stay, stay open, stay curious, because we're not going to be doing this forever. We will move on. Hopefully during the 2021 academic year, we will be able to resume a, more of the face-to-face. -face. Although I think as we'd all agree, I don't know whether all the panelists want to come off mute as I finish shouting. You know, I, I think lessons will have changed forever. I totally agree. And I think, again, it's been about the opportunities. Whilst when this happened at first, we all saw the fear. It's a natural response to feel fearful. But actually, what have we learned from it? We've learned so much in terms of technology. We yeah. you, you yeah. score annotation. I've learned about the use of colour, for goodness sake, uh, in drawing people's attention to things. So, um, yeah, it's been a learning curve. And... and there's part of me that's been glad of it. I, I absolutely agree, Joanna. Anybody else want to come in with anything there? I would agree. I think Please. my teaching has changed. I think mm. I've discovered things that I wasn't actually doing very well. And I didn't realise I wasn't doing them very well until I couldn't do them anymore and I had to find another way. <laughs> works better. So I think it's been a really good opportunity to look. And maybe it's looking at our teaching through a different filter. So, um, you know, I'm not saying I was a terrible, awful teacher. I'm just saying I found different and better ways of, of doing some things. So I think my teaching will always be different now. I agree. And also in terms of pupil independence as well, because you have, haven't we had to learn? We, we couldn't count at the same time as them. We couldn't sing at the same time as them. They've had to learn that independence and we've had to adapt as teachers to support them with that. That's got to be a good thing. The Echo Oral Tests are going to be a breeze for the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, Katrina, is... any thoughts? Yeah. I've got very used to transposing down the semi-time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the skill set that we learn from, from this pandemic. Yeah. yeah. So don't, don't hit the transpose button on your digital piano when you're using classroom microphone. Is that really... <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. And Gwen, any thoughts from you? Um, yeah, I think it, that independence of teachers, sorry, pupils really taking responsibility for their own learning now because we're not there to show them what the right note is. They've got to do more deep thinking. And I think it's been certainly with the sort of around grade one, grade two level where mm. they are struggling with that kind of that area. It's brought them forward to leaps and bounds. I've been really impressed. Yeah, 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 fantastic, fantastic. And again, I wrote a blog about this. Uh, the change, it has acted as a catalyst. Mm. You know, piano teaching has been stuck in a Victorian model, basically, until February. <laughs> and now you've all had to embrace the change. It has acted. And when I wrote my PhD thesis that looked at all this, you know, um, which I did finished five years ago, uh, I was talking about a catalyst for change so that we move away from this Victorian model. There's no way I could have guessed it was going to be a pandemic. But sure, has it really moved us on from that Victorian model? Because until, until then, the Victorian piano teacher could have come in and recognised a piano lesson as being basically the same thing as they were doing. And I think they wouldn't now. Yeah. So I think it's fantastic actually at what everybody has achieved and we will continue to achieve great things I think together. Sharon? Absolutely. Yeah, I just really want to finish by saying um, and reiterating really what we're kind of all talking about here. And that is that we are stronger together. Um, yeah. And hopefully everyone is going away from this webinar feeling um, maybe you, I'm, I'm guessing you probably don't have all the answers, that wasn't the, the intention, but that you are even just seeing the importance of us being together, being a community, because there is just, it, it, it helps us take our, our BB steps forward. Um, I just want to say, because I know just looking at the names of participants, I can see that we have quite a few people who I don't recognise as being members. So I'm just putting there into, um, into the chat the um, the link obviously you can join entirely free um, for a month we have I mean our past two curiosity boxes about being resilient um, 
I mean, Joanna, I know that you have been um, busier than ever. Your business has just, you know, skyrocketed with what you're doing. Absolutely. And yeah. these people are in there giving ideas. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling completely cornered and trapped, um, there is a lot of help and support about other things that you can do to make sure that your business doesn't go into, you know, a head on crash here. Um, and also we had then another um, box, which was all about online lessons and the sorts of things that we can do. Mm -hmm. So there is just, I mean, that's only scratching the surface. Obviously there's all these wonderful members and a lot of other um, videos and boxes. So uh, thank you so much um, for being here. I also want to give a massive, massive shout out, shout out to, uh, to Liz, to Joanna, to Katrina, to Gwen, um, and of course to Hannah and Sally. It and is- And Angie. And Angie, Angie, of course. <laughs> just because I'm not saying <laughs> Angie, it's great. Massive thank you, Angie, for that video. Um, it has just been wonderful um, to all be together, to, to pull um, everything, and to also have your comments that has, you know, stimulated us to think about other things as well. So um, we look forward to seeing you all over inside our Curiosity Lounge, um, and um, have a great rest of the day. Together, we're stronger. We can do this. Bye for now. Bye-bye.